Selinovic, youth international of Serbia. Way out to the left. That's crafty into the box for Vancouver. The shot, and that's in the back of the net for the Canadians. Stop for the left back alley, Adnan. And the Iraqi international makes this 1 0 for Vancouver. No Cavallini, no problem. You have Adnan. Left back with a nice cut on the inside, creates an inside by each down around the uh, 20 and 21 front. As here comes Espinoza to the outside, right footed palm stinger. And it's humped high and over the scoreboard with all the fans there, which has been a neat little touch. One of many little details in this tournament that has tried to connect to the players on the field with the supporters back at home. And here's what Christian Espinoza can do. Ewell, Jutson, this and here comes Reyna with acres of room, he's all alone, Jordi Reyna has Dahomey to his left, it's Reyna, Dahomey was too unselfish but it's an own goal anyway, incredible, San Jose with a corner at one end and the Whitecaps counter at the other and look at what it means. Reyna won't even get credit for the goal, it will be an own goal. And it's the Whitecaps 2 and San Jose nil. And it's an absolute disaster from San Jose's perspective. Every man caught up, nobody back. Generally, you leave one defender back in the center circle for situations just like this. Reyna, in the end, doesn't really play it all that well as he tries to play into Home unselfishly. But by that time, there was a retreat there from Judson, but he's only able to come as far as to knock it into his own goal and over the line. Incredible start for the Whitecaps here, but if you're a San Jose Earthquake and coach Mateus That led to the breakaway for Reyna as he went straight down Main Street ball played in back post and Crapo had to claw it away That was goal bound and it's another save for Crapo Erickson Kamiri the man closing down this little layoff from Jutson to Yule. Back it goes to Erickson, and it's a hand away from Crapo. Danger not over, and the Vaco shot. Mark will have at least three minutes of added time. And a rather worried-looking Matias Almeida, the 46-year-old. What a player he was, and what clubs, too. River Plate, among others. Number six in his career. Double hit. Oh, and a lucky, lucky bounce for Max Crapo. And the referee wants some treatment as that ball came straight at the face of Vezilinovic. And he is still huddled over. But that was good fortune for the Whitecaps as it went straight to Crapo. Terrific delivery. Kimiri to his center back partner and right on target. And what you'd have to say is that San Jose has not looked all that threatening from these set pieces. So many corners in the early going here. But if you continue to concede... So I wonder if that was uh, a sign to make sure that there are a couple of players back. Again, they commit two players forward for the corner. Driven in and a terrific touch. Rios with the redirect and from a set piece, a critical goal by San Jose in first half stoppage time 2-1 white caps and it's only a matter of time you can see so many corner kicks all it takes is a touch here or there nobody at the back post either for vancouver as they pick up centrally and more man to man and then it's just a touch with the outside of the foot from rios perfectly placed with no white cap back there zonal marking from the white caps there and nobody stays with rios as he goes forward and a well-timed redirect gives Crapo no chance. A bad time for the Whitecaps to concede a goal that cuts the lead in half. Nobody's dead. The Citrus Bowl, was it then? Well, yeah, it was the Ireland versus Mexico game. And, of course, Jack Charlton, the former England World Cup winner and manager of Ireland at the time. We remember the baseball cap he was wearing. A 12 noon kickoff. <laughs> you talk about hot in Orlando. Strategy will be with substitutions now for Mark Dos Santos. He has a very depleted squad. As it's a little ball in field and a turn by Vaco. That forces another save by Max Crapo. Another corner for San Jose. 
And it's White Caps again, allowing balls to come in from the wide positions, trying to get bodies in the way, but it means that Crapo has to make another good save here. Protecting that near side for the White Caps. Not easy to do in the conditions. Oh, and Milinkovic has stolen this. That's a terrible play by Vega. And can it be three? It is! And it's a first goal for the White Caps for Christian Dahomey. And that is a catastrophic goalkeeping error by Daniel Vega. White Caps three, San Jose one. And he may have just gifted the White Caps all three points here, Daniel Vega, the veteran Argentine goalkeeper. It's a horrible mistake, and we've seen mistakes like this from Vega before. Last year, famously allowing a back pass under his foot and straight into the goal. This one pretty much gifted just as much as he gives it away to Milinkovic, who very unselfishly puts it on a plate for Dahomey to stroke home. He couldn't miss there. And what Vega was thinking there, perhaps not seeing Milinkovic, but very casual, and he pays for it. And the Whitecaps regain their two-goal cushion. And the lead at the moment in Group B with a half an hour remaining. Well, this was just not in the script at all. And you just wonder if uh, Marco Santos is just readying somebody to come on and provide some fresh legs here in just a moment. Nowinski trying to get goal side. It took a little touch. Danger not over. And in it goes. San Jose have pulled one back in minute 72. They just could not deal with the ball bouncing around. And guess who? What a shock. Another record for Wondolowski. 14 goals against one team. And the Whitecaps stood on the line there. Kripo doesn't come for it. There's no challenge on Wondolowski. And in the end, it might have been steered over after it drops from the header from Wondolowski. Not sure if there was a final touch there. But the ball high in the air. Kripo elects to hold his ground. It bounces down. And there's a check here for offside. Well before this. But the, uh, Obviously couldn't have been on that final header because Craig Poe and the defender Adnan on the line there. It was before this when the ball was played in the first time. And so a bit of a lifeline for the Whitecaps. Ooh, that's close. If that ball is played towards the far side, yeah, he might have been offside. And that's Hoosen on the far side Eddie there. Hoosen. Well, he was ahead of the play. And let's see if this is chalked off. Well, that would be a huge moment. The goal is confirmed, so he's level, and it's 3-2. And it was Fierro, who I thought may have gotten a... ...be there as well, but maybe it's Danny Hoosen, the second-half substitute. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Wants to choose from here. Who's in the Brunigan signing, first as a loney, then as a permanent. Five-man wall it is. This is in a really good spot. Who's going to take the responsibility? Danny Hoosen steps up, took a deflection, and Crapo through the air, and we're one corner away from an MLS record. Another good save from Crapo off the deflection at full stretch. As Hoosen reference point up front, trying to hold the ball up when the Whitecaps do manage to get possession, and there you have the uh, tied record for most corners in a match. 19 in the 81st minute. These two teams just happen to uh, break records every time they meet. Last time it was that man with saves in a match. 19 to 1 the corner count. That's uh, San Jose Earthquakes football. Ball's whipped in. Nobody there. And it's an easy header at the back post. And San Jose has come all the way back. Alanis, the defender, open again. 3-3 in the 82nd minute. And it's Yasser Kamiri who's beaten by Alanis. The Mexican over top of the six foot four frame of the white cap, the young white cap center back. Far too easy, unchallenged really, as Kamiri gets no height on his jump, backing into it. And Alanis just wants it more. Comes over the top of Kamiri there. It's a fair challenge and a good header. And Crepeau can't get near it. And the white caps have surrendered a two goal lead. And San Jose now with all the momentum. That ball, you see Barry, you see Adnan almost turning away from it there with Hoosen attacking it strongly. Oh, the earthquakes look like they want it more now and they have fresh legs to do it. Into the penalty area they go. Still going, Wadalowski!
Max Crapo convinced there was a handball in that lead up. Was it Salinas? It was Shea Salinas, the former Whitecap. And look at the celebrations. Now, Crapo saying to the referee, he's convinced there was a handball prior to that and that all these celebrations will be in vain. But Shea Salinas finishing like Chris Wondolowski. And he just attacks that Whitecap defense, which is really caught backtracking. The Whitecap saying that that ball came up and off the arm of Shea Salinas. And, of course, any time the ball plays the arm, I don't see nope, it at all. That I don't is a see goal. that. And the left-footed drive in between the legs of Maxime Crapeau. A heartbreaking finish here for the Whitecaps, who've been on the back heels pretty much the entire game after going up 2-0. And you see what it means to the San Jose bench. It's a good goal. Nothing wrong with it. They've already checked it. And Shea Salinas, of all people, a second-half substitute, the former Whitecap, comes on to take all three points from this opening game for the Whitecaps in Group B. And that expression says it all. But it was coming. They were pushing. The Whitecaps perhaps even fortunate to be in a 3-1. Everybody wants the final whistle. No foul, they cry. High, back post. Kamiri is there. Can he keep it in? Vega knocks it over the byline. Is that it? Final whistle sounds. The San Jose Earthquakes came from 3-1 down to take all three points in Group B and improve to four points and the top of the group.